My name is Lupita and I'm from India. Um, my body of work is definitely inspired from nature as you can see, but not the traditional objects or forms that you usually see used in jewelry design like flower, stem, branch, mostly the outer structure, but I'm here focusing on internal structure of each natural entity that exists. Uh, but uh, as you can see, my focus here is also on the materials. Um, so I'm planning to just narrow it down to these three materials that I'm using. There is pumice stone, honeycomb, and lufa, as you can see. And these materials are really from the internal structure of the natural entities. Uh, I also feel that these uh, organic structures uh, kind of have a luster, a definite structure or texture, which kind of fascinates me a lot. And it was quite challenging to build it on top of that with the traditional form of techniques in metal and jewelry. Um, I, I also wanted to say that I have used this repetitive forms and structure, as you can see in all my jewelries, because uh, I'm really fascinated with that. Kind of gives me a sense of growth and kind of extension from where it is. And that is how my work has started to explore. Um, I also use jewelries, uh, jewels, gemstones to highlight or to just give enhance the beauty uh, as a wearable jewelry art. So that is it. Thank you. Could you talk a little bit more about your inclusion of that little jewel in the middle of that? Um, there are two points I want to mention on this because uh, why I use these jewels? Because I really think uh, as a stereotypical, when, when you see a wearable jewelry, we really see about blink and things like that. So definitely, I'm very Oh, like you, like you mean bling like gaudy or just like um, no, bling, just jewelry, kind of, jewelry. Uh, yeah, yeah, jewelry. Mm. Um, and the second thing I want to mention is uh, being in watercolor. I was really fascinated towards contrast colors and vibrant shades that I use in green landscape. Um, that's why I personally feel that that is what I, that is a kind of finishing point where I just mm. want to add a jewel. Mm -hmm. and make it like you know mm -hmm. uh, look good yeah initially when i started using honeycomb i used to do it in resin and it was kind of brittle because if if i have to set a stone it was really kind of brittle because it, it used to crack so i decided to you know cast it in the uh, like to loss of casting because the form itself is so fascinating that is what I thought it would look good in, in like material, like precious material if I do because that is what I'm intending to do, like having non-traditional and traditional materials together. The second thing I would focus on, Lufa really I don't have any problem because of that because it's kind of very flexible when it, when it is soaked in water and you can just, you know, when it dries it up, it takes the shape of whatever you have. Mm -hmm. um, and the next thing I would say is uh, acorns. I thought that acorns would be like brittle and I wouldn't be able to work with it, but I have used 16 gauge wire, that is steel wire, at the back of it for me, creating a structure. Um, and I really don't think uh, that I have faced challenge with that, but I used resin initially to coat it with, to just preserve its textural quality. But I kind of noticed that it kind of cracks. So I use lacquer the next time. Yeah. And it really worked well. Um, it worked really well. The stone was really kind of challenging because what I wanted to do with it was really like manipulating and doing stuff. It was really kind of challenging because it is too brittle. You never know when you drill it, it will just crack or it will drill nicely. You have no idea. It's kind of surprise. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed that and I think that because of that, uh, I really like the whole process of Pumice stone. I'm really fascinated to that right now, and I think my next next projects will be related to pumice stone more because uh, all the processes related to it are really exciting.